Hello everybody, this is Quietie. Um, I decided to do a different little video for Halloween. My channel used to be a lot different. As you can tell, I made this background a long time ago. Last, it was probably a couple Halloweens ago, honestly. I can't remember how long it was. But um, I used to do a different avatar and everything. And I actually usually hide some of my previous work because it's kind of, I guess, cringy for me to see. But, um, as you can tell, this is what my avatar looks like now. And, well, this is what it used to look like. But, so for Halloween, I thought I would actually re-release my very first Halloween video I ever did. It might only stay up for a day before my common sense kicks in and takes it down. So if you guys want to watch it, I will... Yeah, here you go. And also, when I was doing my very first videos, I really didn't like my voice, and I never worked on it and stuff. So I actually used to use my wife to record all my stuff, and I'd write a script for her. So this is actually my wife's voice you'll hear in this video. And if you would, I'm going to put some links before for my voting for my project I'm going to work on. So it's going to be between a song and a book. So let me know what you want me to do. Okay? Love y'all. Thanks. Hi everybody, this is Chrissy. Halloween is almost here and I decided to make a special video for it. So here is five weird, scary stories most people don't know about. Is anyone a fan of Michael Myers? Well, the very first Halloween movie had a low budget, so they sent someone to find a cheap mask from a local Halloween store. The shop had a few different masks, but they needed one with a specific expression. So, the mask that they chose was none other than Captain Kirk, mask from Star Trek. They modified and colored it, but I think you can still see a little of William Shatner in Michael's mask. You remember all those stories about the crazy people in every city slipping razor blades in a candy bar or using a syringe to inject candy with poison? Well, maybe you should keep an eye on your own family, because in reality, almost every case of Halloween candy being tampered with has been performed by a member of their own family. Some examples are the case of the Ronald, Ronald O'Brien, who laced his son's sweets with cyanide to collect a life insurance policy. Or there's Kevin Tostin, who died of a heroin overdose after he found his uncle's drug stash. His own family sprinkled heroin over his candy to protect the uncle. And of all the cases of foreign objects hidden in sweets, like needles or razor blades, all but a small few have been hoaxes or the media jumping on an untrue story. According to an old Irish folk story, there was a man named Jack who sat down to share a drink with the devil. After they were done, Jack talked the devil into changing himself into a coin to pay for the drinks. The devil did so, and Jack put the devil coin into his pocket next to a silver cross. Because of the cross, the devil couldn't transform back to his original form. Jack said he would free the devil if he agreed to leave Jack alone for a full year. And if Jack died that year, the devil couldn't take his soul. When the year was, was up, the devil went back for Jack, and Jack said before he went if the devil would go get him a piece of fruit from a tall tree. When the devil climbed up the tree, Jack carved a cross on the bark, so the devil could not come back down. Jack erased the cross after the devil promised to leave him alone for ten years. Soon after the rage went, Jack died. Because of all the deals with the devil, God wouldn't allow Jack into heaven. And because of the devil promised not to take Jack's soul, he couldn't go to hell either. So the devil gave Jack a burning coal to light his way as he wanders the earth. Later, Jack put the coal into a carved turnip to light his way. And that is where the jack-o'-lanterns came from. A woman from Oregon was looking to get some Halloween decorations at Kmart in 2012. She purchased a graveyard kit to set up on her lawn. As she was opening the kit, she discovered there was a note inside. The note was from a Chinese factory worker from where the graveyard kit was made. The worker claimed he and numerous others were tortured and enslaved into a forced labor camp, making toys 15 hours a day with no pays or days off. The worker also pleaded for the letter to be forwarded to the World Human Rights Organization. 
The Oregon woman did just that, and the Chinese worker was freed when the camp was exposed months later. One Halloween night in 1984, an 8-year-old Brian Massey was normally out trick-or-treating with his sisters, but he ended up facing a real-life horror story. His new stepfather, David Andrews, stabbed his mother to death while Brian was in his room. Then he proceeded to chase the two sisters down the hall, murdering them as well. Then David went into Brian's room, covered in blood, and kidnapped the boy. Two days, two days later, the police found the stepfather, who tried to kill himself and failed and also found the eight-year-old alive. Disturbingly though, David Andrews struck a plea bargain in exchange for reducing his sins, which the now 41-year-old Brian Massey opposes. Well, that's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed all these stories. So everyone, please have a fun and safe time trick-or-treating, and as always, have a quiet-filled day. Bye!